Welcome to iDesign's Educational Environment Design Evaluation. Firstly, I want to start by saying a big thank you for listening to this presentation. It's an introduction to the research we've conducted on the design of educational spaces in relation to student well-being. Schools are places of safety where young people should thrive and grow. And for the majority of children, schools are an exciting space to learn, make friends and explore the world around them. However, children nowadays have so much pressure on them to succeed in their exams, live up to peer pressure and keep in with the in thing. And so for some, these centres of safety have become places of stress, anxiety and depression, be it through bullying, violence or general isolation. Many schools have policies in place to deal with mental health and bullying, as it is much more widely known and dealt with. However, many schools have not taken into consideration their spatial environment and how this might have an impact on the well-being of their pupils. We as designers would like to explore and rethink how through spatial planning, use of different furniture and an innovative approach, we could address some of these issues that we have described. Unfortunately, the statistics around bullying are overwhelming. To look at just a few, Ditch the Label is one of the UK's leading anti-bullying charities and they reported that 45% of young people experience bullying before the age of 18. And in the year ending March 2018, the Department of Education estimated that 17% of children aged 10 to 15 in England were bullied in the previous 12 months in a way that made them feel frightened or upset. Our motivations for this project have also been driven by the facts surrounding the long-term effects of bullying. Ditch the Label conducted a study that concluded that three out of four people who were bullied said it affected their mental health and nearly half became depressed as a result. And the Association for Psychological Science reported that those who have been bullied are more than twice as likely to have a difficulty in keeping a job or committing to saving compared to those not involved in bullying. So our main aims for this project are to encourage and celebrate self-expression, increase social interaction and reduce hostile opportunity. We rely on schools to provide our children with knowledge and to steer them into a happy and successful career. But equally, we also look to them for many other skills that contribute to life beyond the classroom, such as socialisation, listening, emotional development, confidence... But in order to be successful in this venture, we need to be creating schools that are reflective of these objectives. Traditionally, classrooms are organised in basic rows or clusters of desks. So for our next stage of research, we looked at existing school designs that boast innovative learning environments or learning systems that differ from traditional classrooms and teaching layouts to understand how they work and contribute to bettering students' well-being. Firstly, we looked at feature telephone plan a Swedish school with an entirely different learning environment that is supported heavily by students relying on technology. Their spatial arrangement allows pupils to choose where they learn and reduces microaggressions in doing so. Then we went on to look at Finnish schools. Finland has undeniable great success in education and they opened their first open plan schools in the 1990s. People were sceptical about how this would work in terms of acoustics, hence the introduction of Shula schools and the integration of other noise-reducing habits. But better surfacing materials are now available as well, so it proves this type of environment can work. There are also Montessori and Reggio Emilia schools, which use an emergent or child-centred curriculum, improving focus by piquing children's interest in what they wish to learn. And finally, forest schools, which have become more common in the UK, especially within primary learning. This learning outside element with a lot of physical activity boosts students' well-being. Now, the forest schools and Montessori are approaches that you might be aware of as they are happening in the UK. However, the more advanced spatial concepts, such as those used in Vitra Telephone Plan and the Open Plan Finished Schools, are concepts which haven't been implemented in this country. So then that leads us to question why we haven't been proactive in adopting new approaches. A big focus for schools and teaching professionals is obviously the content students are learning and the ways in which they are learning it. But often overlooked is the classroom design. The traditional classroom design has worked all these years, so why change it now? And how can we be sure that it will have an effect on things such as bullying? Well, the University of Salford in Manchester conducted a study to research how much classroom design had an impact on student behaviour, and the results show 25% both positively and negatively. 
So if we can develop this concept and get the design right, the positive impact that we can make on student behaviour is substantial. When it comes to public buildings, physical safety of the user is of utmost importance, and so there are many standards and regulations to follow. But what about when it comes to the mental well-being of the user? Well, unfortunately, this hasn't yet been considered as equal importance to that of physical safety. But during our research, we discovered the well-being standard, which takes a holistic approach to health in the built environment, addressing behaviour, operations and design. There are seven concepts to this well-being standard grounded in medical research, and we believe four of these are very important to educational environments, which are air, light, comfort and mind. The International Wellbeing Institute currently offers pilot programmes for retail, multifamily residential, education, restaurant and commercial kitchen projects. So we'll be using these four concepts outlined in this standard to further help improve student wellbeing. A big problem within schools is students being unable to express themselves fully as individuals, causing frustration, which is often played out as destructive behaviour or hurtful actions towards other students. Understanding how we express ourselves is important and, as we get older, our appearance plays a big part of this. At school, uniforms are effective in preventing bullying, however, they consequently also remove one avenue in which children can express themselves. Therefore, other avenues to exercise expression within the school environment include creative expression and the ability to take control of one's learning. There are three main reasons why a student may choose to bully. Firstly, they might use it as a coping behaviour, if they're going through a difficult time at home, for instance. Secondly, they do it to impress others, as a way to fit in with the crowd. And finally, because of differences, whether that be in academic achievements or a disability, etc. This plan on the screen of an existing school has been marked to show what type of bullying might happen where, just so that we can become aware of how we can combat these issues through our new concepts. So just to conclude our research section of this presentation, we're trying to nurture an array of individuals, each with a multitude of learning styles. The rebellious behaviour of students has taught us that one size does not fit all, and the classroom design requires a re-evaluation over how it can best suit these individual needs. So in light of our research, we decided to split the different types of learning styles into four to make sure that we're designing a classroom that accommodates the needs of all of those learning styles. Firstly is the presentation and recording of information, second is individual study, third one-on-one -on -one and small group discussion and finally task orientated study. So this is an overview of our design as you can see here we've taken a pre-existing school wing and illustrated our design concept within it. We've done things such as increasing sight lines into corridors from classrooms, incorporating open plan bathrooms, used hexagonal shape tables to allow for a multitude of seating arrangements, combined areas for study within the corridors and circulation spaces, and merged classroom spaces together to improve student integration. So I'm now going on to explain the components of these concepts in more detail to show you how they work and what types of learning styles that each of these concepts accommodates. So firstly we have our discussion space which is a space that can be expanded to accommodate different volumes of group discussion sessions. The booth structure has three sides comprised of interiors finished with whiteboard as an opportunity for sharing ideas. Students are therefore able to have a choice over how they present, display and record information. Within the booth is modular seating cushions that can be moved into a series of arrangements depending on the way the space is intended to be used. The exterior is upholstered with sound absorbing fabric as well to help with the acoustic challenges that arise with more open plan spaces. And if you look on the right hand side of the screen you'll see the ways in which this space can be configured. It works well within the classroom as a way to merge two classrooms together a tool that can be used to unite different age groups or abilities. Additionally, in large areas of circulation, these can be used as either large group workshops or exhibition display. Next, we have the study pods. These were initially developed to accommodate just individual study, but have now evolved into modules that can also be used by a teacher giving one-on-one -on -one support. And another variation of these pod features bench seating. 
which can either be used as a breakout space or shorter discussions, and you can see these on the right hand side of the screen. The enclosed design helps focus the user on the task in hand, yet the sloped sides allow for staff and fellow pupils to see into the pod, again ensuring all spaces are visible. This is particularly important as cyberbullying is an ever-expanding problem. iPad screens will also be integrated into the desk to work in conjunction with the Diana Award anti-bullying scheme, where students will be able to report anonymously bullying issues. The study pods will also have a whiteboard at the back for writing notes to express themselves, and like the discussion spaces, other surfaces will be upholstered in the sound-absorbing fabrics. The final innovative design space looks somewhat like a campfire formation and is intended for task-orientated learning. This is when a class of students are presented with a task, they complete the task and then they follow through with feedback to their peers. This space lends well to this type of learning. The oval formation works well for presenting information to a bigger group of people where the shape creates a more welcoming space to present from. There is ample desk space to carry out the task and the fixed nature of this unit removes other distractions and keeps focus, for example, preventing students from rocking on their chairs. A big talking point is the bathrooms. As indicated in our earlier research, this is an area for high levels of bullying and other antisocial behaviour, predominantly because it's generally out of sight and staff are rarely, if ever, patrolling within this space. An open plan bathroom is not something new, it's been done before and is being encouraged in school new builds. However, it has faced some criticism for invasion of privacy. The cubicle doors on our proposal will each be full height to combat this and security cameras and adjacent windows, of course, will not have view of the communal wash basin. This is purely to increase natural surveillance of this area. The choice of trough basins will aid with other common antisocial behaviour such as blocking and overfilling sinks. So here's a render of how that might look in conjunction with the corridor space. As you can see it's all open and then we've got like a discussion or um, a breakout space within this corridor for students and staff to use. The psychology of colour is also another very important aspect that we are taking into consideration with this design. For example, did you know that you're more likely to lose your temper in a yellow room? And here you can see we just have a series of renders that show you how the students and the staff might interact within the space or how they might use the space. We've gone for using more cool toned colours in these renders some more creative colours but obviously they can be changed depending on school branding or other elements such as what emotions or what behaviour you want to spark within that environment such as creativity or being more focused. So just as an overview of this presentation and an understanding of our journey of this project we've empathised and defined a problem within schools that we wish to make a difference to. We've ideated some concepts that we think will or can work very well within a school environment to help improve these problems and our next steps as such are to prototype and to test. As a part of our next steps we would also really appreciate if you would just be able to take a moment to answer a short questionnaire that would help us to further our understanding of existing wellbeing policies within schools that you may have worked in or have knowledge of and also really to evaluate the feasibility of our concepts that I've just outlined to you whether that's something that you think might work within a school setting or to give us any improvements that you may think would benefit us but once again I'd like to thank you for the time you've taken to listen to this presentation we really appreciate it.